everyone has something to give. And perhaps the most precious gift is what we give ourselves. My grandmother's sister had three children with disabilities. Umanath was the one I knew best and I remember best. He, had, he was much older than us, about 15 years or so, and he had what in those days was called severely mentally retarded. We learned all his gestures, what was hunger, what was thirst, what meant let's go, and we even learned to adroitly kind of get out of his way when he shoved us in irritation because we were so noisy and naughty and always getting underfoot. His parents took him everywhere. Much later, I realized how unusual that was. You know, the Indian census tells us that one person in 50 has a disability. And yet, I mean, that's a huge number, right? And yet everywhere we went with Omanath, he would be the only person with the disability that we saw. On long family lunches, trips to the beach, at pujas, at weddings, Omanath would be there in his checked shirt, crisp white pajamas, hair neatly combed with his loving, watchful parents. As an adult, I realize what a gift that is. Not just to Omanath from his parents of taking him everywhere, but a gift to us, younger kids. We grew up around him, and so any kind of fear or scare we might have had about differences melted away with familiarity. Now, you know, you think how unusual that is, and it's such a greater gift, not, you know, to us, to, the, to him, but also to the larger city of Chennai where he grew up. Because his parents were basically saying, the world is made up of different kinds of people with different abilities. The more we interact, the more we see each other and get to know each other, the richer we are as a people. Last week, we celebrated Diwali, this festival of lights, of gifts, and new beginnings. As I was lighting lamps with my young daughter, and really we were enjoying the glow, I thought of gifts and different kinds of gifts intangible ones, so not just the sweets and the new clothes that you get, but gifts that cannot be measured or can't be bought and sold. I thought how often these gifts come to us from our parents, and how often they even come to us from our children. Rajneesh and Monisha have two lovely children, Mihan and Meera. Mihan loves to read, and he really is passionate about science. Meera has signed up for every extracurricular activity in her school, from theater to dance to soccer, you name it. Now, Mihan was born with an extra chromosome. As you know, most humans have 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs in every cell. In Mihan's case, for number 21, instead of a pair, he has three. That one extra chromosome means he has what's called trisomy 21, commonly called Down syndrome. Now, the triple screen test routinely done during pregnancy had not shown up as high risk. Mihan's parents realized about his condition only two or three days after birth. And they've been through the same challenges that so many of the parents here must have gone through. Not just being new parents, but what it suddenly means to be parents to a child with disability. They had a choice that they could make. They could have stayed in Singapore, they could have moved to the UK to access better education and therapy facilities, but they decided to gift themselves a support system. For us, inclusion, Monisha says, means society, and Bombay is where they had their friends and their family. Now, when Mihan was two, they decided to have another child. And in a move that still takes my breath away when I think about it, they did something remarkable. They did not test for disability. No amnio, no triple screen, nothing. Because along with the challenges of raising Mihan, he had given them so much joy. He had opened a whole world to them, and they wanted to honor that gift. 
so they did not test. Now, do you think it's possible for one individual to bring about change through other people? For one individual who might be completely silent to still have something to give? 29 years ago, a woman came down in a bus from a remote village in the Himalayas to the city of Dehradun. She was heavily pregnant. She ended up going into labor in the bus and giving birth on the side of the road. It was her 13th baby, and it was 12 weeks premature. Through a series of events, this baby was adopted into a family of two parents and two children. They didn't have much of a bank balance or money, but they had huge hearts. As the baby's mother, the incredible Jo Chopra says, against all odds, miraculously, she came into our lives. She wasn't meant to survive, but she did. They named the baby Moi Moi. As Moi Moi grew up, it turned out that she had cerebral palsy, but she also had a rare uh, degenerative neurological disorder. As the disorder progressed, she lost the ability to walk, to talk, and even to eat. So she was a quadriplegic, wheelchair-bound, and completely silent. But this is really not a story about misery. It's an amazing story. Because for Moi Moi, her parents created a huge, large, loving community. She was the center of our worlds, Jo says. We built our world around her, and everything radiated from there. As part of the loving community, they created what is known as the Latika Roy Foundation. And now, you know, numbers don't always convey the kind of the magic and the power of what uh, Moi Moi inspired, but sometimes numbers help. So if we look at last year's numbers for the foundation, it had seven centers across the city doing everything from early intervention, assessment, vocational training, you name it. More than 200 people have meaningful jobs because of the foundation. 150 um, professionals and about 700 family members have been trained there. 1,900 children have been helped there and trained there. Hundreds across the country have a better and deeper understanding of what special me needs means. Now, this started 24 years ago, and two months ago, dear Moi Moi passed away. But her light will continue to shine. What a legacy. It is no small thing. We've now talked about gifts that, you know, other, we give to others or others have given us. But what about giving something to ourselves? How do we do that? When each of us has a minute to ourselves, what do we do? I bet everyone does exactly the same thing. We pick up our cell phones and we check it. We check our WhatsApp, our Facebook, you know, Twitter, whatever it is. These days, there are even apps that measure how much time you spend on other apps. My husband found one the other day. And he, spent, he is not on social media at all. So at the end of the day, his phone shows just a little bit of talk time, whereas mine has like a gazillion minutes on everything else, right? Anyway, so what if you took some of that talk time or phone time, what if you took some of those busy moments and spent them in silence? I really believe that there is great insight and strength that comes from being in silence. I'm not talking about external noise. That we can, you know, at some level get rid of. We can sit in a quiet room, turn off the TV, turn off our phone. I even have a friend who comes to our meditation circle and turns off his hearing aids to be in silence. Um, so not outer noise, but inner silence. How do we deal with the inner silence? How do we calm our minds against the clamorous, clanging thoughts, against all the distractions that we have? We need to, at some level, learn to be alone, alone with our thoughts, and you know, from that, our actions. Why does it matter, you might ask? Because it helps us see better, see our actions, our thoughts, our very fabric of our character is determined by who we are and what we say and do. 
because it helps us become better listeners. Listening to people's stories, their challenges, their struggles, what a great gift to give them. Because, like in the case of Omanath and Mihan and Moi Moi, we never know where the gifts are coming from and how they will light up our lives. So start small, a few seconds, a few minutes in the beginning of your morning, during the day, whenever possible, in the evening before you go to bed. You will be amazed at what your inner landscape shows you. We need to learn to be a light onto ourselves to cultivate a guiding spirit that glows and takes us through this world. Everyone has something to give, and silence may be one of the most precious gifts we give ourselves. Thank you.